What's up everybody, once again my name is Matt and welcome back to The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Feels weird to be saying that again, but yes, as you guys just saw, we got a brand new side quest titled Xenoblade Chronicles 2. It's a free DLC quest that they released today to help promote Xenoblade Chronicles 2, I guess. Either way, I figured it was worth checking out, so yeah, if we open up our adventure log, we can get the hints we need to finish this quest. The southern sky from the middle of the largest bridge, the eastern sky from the skull's left eye, the southeastern sky from the peak of the tall pierced snowy mountain. Look to the night sky at these locations and find the red shooting stars. As you can see, there are three stars left for us to find. Each of those stars will spawn a chest. Inside those chests is one armor piece, and today, we're going to be getting Rex's armor from Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Rex is the main character, and uh, you can find his default armor now in The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. So, let's get started. The largest bridge in the game is, of course, the Bridge of Hylia. We might as well start by teleporting there, just because it's one of the easiest ones to get. Although, none of them are particularly that hard to find. Like the hint said, though, we have to look to the night sky, meaning that we can only trigger these chests to appear at nighttime, which I believe for this game is between the in-game hours of 9pm to 4am. It might be 5am, but I'm not 100% sure on that, so to play it safe, I'm just going to say 9pm to 4am, which is still plenty of time to do everything. In fact, I'm willing to bet we can find all these chests in one night, no problem. If you've completed all the shrines, you know, filled out every region on your map, you probably have a good idea of where you need to go to find these items because they're all in pretty obvious locations and the riddles are not that hard to solve. Um, looks like we will make it to the side of the first chest a little bit early. No big deal though, I suppose we can just like drop a campfire, wait until nighttime, and then start working on this quest. It's actually been a couple months since I last played Breath of the Wild. Like, I think the last time I played it was uh, when I was doing the Trial of the Sword DLC. Still waiting for DLC 2, just like everyone else, but uh, yeah, even though I have plenty of Korok seeds to collect, I just can't bring myself to do it because I find absolutely no joy in tracking down and collecting Korok seeds. Like, I made a couple of guide videos back in the day, but Man, I just can't do it anymore. It's just so boring for me. Alright, let's get rid of these guys. That way we can safely make a fire. And you know what? While we're here, we might as well open up this chest. See what's inside. Uh, silver scale spear. Nothing too amazing, but whatever. Um, let me just grab some wood real quick. There we go. We'll set up this campfire, make it nighttime, and then hopefully we can find the first shooting star. So, let's just sleep until night. And we'll be good to go. It was like 7 p.m. So I really didn't want to stand around waiting until 9. That would take like way too long. Now I think it said south. So if I face this direction. I think I just heard a chime. Um, Yeah, I can already hear something falling. There it goes. It's kind of cool how it has like its own unique sound effect and stuff like that. Um, otherwise, though, it does kind of remind me of a star fragment, except it falls a lot faster. And, of course, it's glowing red instead of yellow. I think the light that's emitting from the chest also lasts a lot longer. You know how when you get close to a star fragment, the, uh, yellow light sort of goes away? Well, that's not really the case with these chests, because they stay until, like, you're right on top of it, which is pretty useful, not gonna lie. Alright, so let's open up this chest and get ourselves... The Salvager Headwear. Oddly enough, the uh, bonus effect is Swim Speed Up, which is kind of strange, but cool nonetheless. Now that we got that, though, let's make our way to the second chest. And uh, one of the hints said the left eye of a skull. And yeah, the only skull I know of is Skull Lake. So let's teleport over there and uh, see if we can't find another shooting star. Now, if you guys remember correctly, this area is uh, where we would talk to Kilton the first time if we wanted to trigger the side quest to start his monster shop. So, yeah, it's been a while since we've been back here. And I know the hint did say the left eye, which is where you would actually find Kilton. But, um, you can do everything from the right eye, and I recommend that you do. You'll see why once we actually get this chest to spawn in. So, I think we need to point our gaze towards the northeast, and then we should get this chest to spawn, so use your compass and map to point yourself in the right way. I heard the ting, and oh great, there's a blood moon tonight. 
But, um, yeah, there's our chest, so let's track it down. And that's why you want to stay up on the right eye, because then you can easily glide over to, you know, this area in the Akala region and reach the chest a lot easier than if you were to do it, like, from the bottom of the, uh, left eye. Anyways, let's grab Majora's Mask real quick, because it is nighttime. Obviously, monsters are going to be spawning out of the ground. I don't want to deal with any of that, and thankfully... Majora's Mask will negate the hostility of those monsters should they spawn. Um, I really hope we can actually get that third and final chest before this Blood Moon kicks off, but I don't know if we can do that because it's already 10.30, so I'll do my best, but uh, it'll be really, really close if we manage to pull it off. It would help if I stop running out of stamina too. Jeez, man. Alright, so inside this second chest, we're going to get ourselves... The Salvager's Vest. Nice, it actually looks pretty cool. Now that we got that though, there's one more piece of armor we need to track down. And unfortunately, it's in the Hebra region, all the way on top of Hebra Peak. Ah, uh, that stinks. And to make matters worse, the shrine that we just teleported to, although it's like, directly on top of the peak, at least on the map, it actually puts us at the base of the mountain, so there's gonna be some climbing in our future. It's a good thing that, like, Revali's Gale did completely refresh, like, as soon as we started recording this video, so... That will at least make getting to the top of the mountain a little bit easier, and I'll use that as much as I can, but, uh... Yeah, I have a feeling that's still gonna take us a long time to get up there. I don't think we're gonna be able to outbeat that Blood Moon. Also, real quick, let me put on some snow gear so we don't freeze to death. That should do the trick. Now, sadly, I do need to use at least one of my charges of Raleigh's Gale just to get out of here since, uh, I am not waiting for all that ice to melt. But, ooh, yeah, we got a crosswind. All right, that is perfect because I'm pretty sure around this bend, yeah, there's a giant gust of wind that, like, blows you close to the peak of the mountain. So, that actually worked out really, really well. Then we might be able to use the rest of Raleigh's Gale to, uh, reach the summit oh man we're getting so close to that blood moon it's already 11 20 um yeah i don't think there's any possible way for us to beat it i was really really hoping we could but uh dang that like time limit was way too tight uh, i might be able to reach the peak or at least get a little bit closer but yeah, I forgot how quickly time passes in this game. Come on, Link, just freaking use Revali's Gale. There we go, buddy. You got it. Man, we were so close, too. Oh, well. We tried, guys. We tried to beat it. Just, uh, we were not quick enough. Let me just skip this real quick and get right back to it. And, uh, we'll find the final chest. All right. So I think we're... Probably close enough to the peak now. And, um, what direction do we have to look? I think we had to look southeastern, right? Um, I think I heard it. So, yeah, there it is. All right, we got it. Sweet. Let's just go and track that down, and we'll get the final piece of Rex's armor set. And I know you guys, just like myself, are excited to see what it looks like. Once we equip it and put it on and in good lighting, so we're probably going to immediately leave this area. Like, demoing an armor set in the Hebrew region would be pointless since, you know, everything's sort of grayed out and desaturated. It just looks really gross. I want to go somewhere nice and sunny, so I probably do want to make it like noontime as well. Regardless, let's open up this chest and get ourselves these salvager trousers. Nice. Now the set is complete, so, like I said, I do want to get a good look at this thing, so, um, you know what, let's actually travel to the Shrine of Resurrection, just because we haven't been back to the Great Plateau in a really long time, and, well, generally speaking, the Great Plateau is usually a safe place to go, hopefully, um, it's not like raining or there's any bad weather, I do want to make it noontime though, so, we'll cross our fingers and just, like, hope for the best. Overall, though, that was a pretty fun little side quest. Like, it really didn't take long at all, but still, I enjoyed it nonetheless. I kind of hope Nintendo continues to add things to Breath of the Wild, even after DLC Pack 2, because I know 
That's like the big DLC pack that's supposed to add like a bunch of post-game story content and stuff like that. And they've been working on that for a really long time, so... It's supposed to come out before the end of the year. I don't know if it is or not, but, uh... I'm looking forward to it. And, like, if they add little side quests like this afterwards, or even leading up to the DLC, I'm totally for that, man, because... That really will extend the life of the game and keep me coming back to it. And maybe they'll add, like, a better incentive to getting all 900 Korok seeds. Because right now, that golden poop from Hestu, not really doing it for me. Alright, let's make it noon and hopefully, it'll be nice enough to show off the armor. Because I really want to see how this thing looks. Because honestly, it doesn't really seem like something that fits Zelda. But also... Like, the graphics artists do a really good job at making things that don't fit Breath of the Wild fit Breath of the Wild, if you know what I'm saying. So, there we go. Alright, not bad, actually. Not bad. Kinda does look like the, uh, climbing gear a little bit. Um, oh, that weird, like, helmet thing is sort of clipping through the shield, but overall, still a cool-looking armor set. I like it. I think that is where I'm going to end off this video, though. So if you guys enjoyed this part, a like rating would be greatly appreciated. If you want to see more, consider subscribing. But once again, guys, my name is Matt. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.